What's your show called? It's not a show yet. This is just a friendly catch up. Okay. So I've got, um, I'm here with Omar Sufi, the managing director of Trading Time. Um, Omar's also a really good friend of mine. Um, we've had a, had a long and intertwined career that's developed into a pretty good fr friendship and um, we spent a lot of time talking with each other and helping each other out and um, it's pretty pretty awesome to be able to get a bit of an insight. He's, um, as I said, the managing director of Trading Time. Um, he's got a bit of a team that uh, he's working with, uh, building building a, a great little business there, uh, servicing electrical contractors, uh, of which I'm one of them, um, doing electrical estimates, um, as built, just really trying to help out electrical contractors and make their life a lot easier. So, uh, hello, Omar. Hey, Scotty, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's cool, man. This is uh, this is the first time I've done it, the first time you've done it. So it'll uh, it'll be interesting. So I guess we'll Very just have to bear with each other and put up with all our faults like we have done for the last 10 years or so. I feel like I'm missing a microphone and a headset as well. well this this um, is your... Maybe that's for, for next time. Yeah, this is notes, your... Notes um, taken. Trigger to go get one. I'll be getting straight onto the Office Works <laughs> website after this, mate. So Omar, Managing Director of Trading Time, tell us a little bit about you, I guess, and you know, you know, how you're in this electrical construction industry. I actually started, I never planned to get into the electrical industry. My dad is an electrical engineer um, who worked in Abu Dhabi, Dubai for the last 20 years or so. Um, the initial plan was, especially living, I think we should go back a bit. I'll go back a bit. Um, so I was I was born in Australia, raised in Abu Dhabi, Dubai. So the life there, it's not easy to maintain a good life. You need to really work hard to live a comfortable life. Pe people think that it's easy to make money in Dubai. Yes, it is, if you're in the right place with the right expertise and knowledge. And it's, you know how they always say, it's all about who you know, not what you know. It is a lot like that over there. And when I came to do my HSC, I came back to Australia to do my HSC to get into uni. And my dad's recommendation was to get into electrical because of his knowledge, connections, and where he can set me up overseas. Um, and the plan was just to go with it and see how it goes. If I enjoy it, I continue. If not, I can look for something else. So in my the way I work is if I start something, I have to finish it, no matter what it is, whether I enjoy it or not. I've got that mindset where if you start it, you've got to finish it. So I um, got into electrical, finished it. Yeah, my dad actually got me a job um, in Dubai to do my internship during uni. There was like a, we had to do a full semester of work experience. So he got me to work on one of the big seven star hospitals in Abu Dhabi. It's called Cleveland Clinic of Abu Dhabi, one of the main hospitals there at the moment. Um, worked there. I did really well. They actually offered me a full time position once I finished studying. But I, had, I had to come back, study further. When I finished, I was. Asking that to get me a job is like, now nah, you got to do project management now. Got into Sorry, project Omar, management as well. You, what were you studying at the time in the electrical field? Electrical engineering. Engineering, right. Uh, University of Sydney, yeah. Um, worked there. When I finished, started my project management. That's where I ended up meeting my wife and we got married during that period. Um, at the time, while I was studying, I worked at uh, a lighting control specialist company that dealt with CBUS, Dynalight, KNX, and the similar systems. One of the main main integrators in New South Wales. It's called MySmart, MySmart CTI. Um, from there, I learned the estimating process. So I started in the sales department. Working, working in sales and realizing that it's a very niche industry. I didn't want to be stuck in a niche industry. Once you're stuck in there, it's not easy to 
move across um, um becomes the more the, it? there's only so far it, you can go exactly so i that's when i decided to um pretty much move move on with that knowledge and experience apply it into um into the estimating for electrical contractors so i that's when i moved to tot electrical where i met yourself that's where we crossed paths um, yes that's where we crossed yes um it was it was a really really good experience because the company and us, I believe we grew together at the same time. So it wasn't, I wasn't given a position where I had someone teach me how to estimate. I actually had to use my engineering mind into putting things together. So I saw projects as a big puzzle or a Lego puzzle where each item was a piece and I had to get the information required for each piece in terms of labor and material. And that was done by communicating and getting the ex getting the info from experienced people like yourself and other people on site. Um, I, I I did face initially a fair bit of struggles when people couldn't think thought I couldn't do this job because I don't have the on site experience, but I believe that I can I can do it, and here I am. Um, it, one of at TOT, one of, it wasn't it wasn't just estimating that you were putting together. There was a lot of there was building the processes and and the way things were. Yes. As you're saying, the way the puzzles needed to come together, you spent a lot of time building yes. that back end side of it. So yes, you didn't I, just I come in got, to a yeah. set system and press play. You had to come in and create the system essentially on how to start exactly. the, the estimating process. And, um, and I think this this is where project management and engineering came into place where the directors did see that in me, I guess, and they started dragging me into their internal meetings to see how how we can improve the systems and processes in place. What was what was the thought processes? Because I when we were working there together, I, I learned a lot from you as well. The finding Thanks. Uh, putting together the processes and that that real engineer methodical mindset you were implementing that at the same time as building it and learning almost a new trade with because uh, it was a lot of residential and commercial construction so you were learning exactly. and as that was coming in you were filtering it out into a system and it it got together really well oh thanks i'm uh, glad i'm glad it yeah. worked well and, and that, so pretty that much the same estimate. system yes and i pretty much still apply the same process but we're always learning. We're always building on top. Um, try to learn different systems more in depth and applying that as we grow. Yeah, awesome. And then um, our paths intertwined again, and we we crossed at another contractor. And then then you went um, went on your way to starting training time. Um, yep. I had Defense Electrical with Matt, and um, we came back in contact again and. You got you at trading time. You've been our main estimating service for the last four, three, three and a half years, probably. Seems like it's working well. Yeah, it's going, it's going all right. So, <clears throat> what and so getting into the what could your dad was a big influence in getting into the electrical industry. Did you have a yeah. passion or a thought for it before then? Like, had you given it much thought? Not at all. We, when I was younger, like especially with our culture, they always want to push you to become a doctor. A doctor was like a thing that you, everyone tried their kids to achieve. Um, but when my really the, the reason that stopped me from being a doctor was my marks. I didn't really work as hard to achieve those goals. And I think if I did, again with my mindset, I would have probably pushed pushed through to become a doctor. Um, but I did have high, enough enough marks to get me into most of the other fields. But again, like you said, it was the opportunities that I can get into was the main reason why I started into electrical. And again, going back to me as a person, I enjoy everything I do, um, no matter what field it is. Even during studying, I was working at Oporos um, when they first started. I really enjoyed working at Oporos. Like I would... Uh, when it gets really busy, I would actually 
take control of both grills and be cooking chicken, all the different types of chickens they had, managing both both grills at the same time. Um, I yeah, I just I see things as I don't see things as a problem or a block. I, any issue I face, I usually see it as an opportunity to master it and be the best I can at it. I think with with that attitude, anyone can can do well. So it's a uh, a doctor of electrical esti- estimating now. <laughs> there you go. And and so now you've had you've been in the industry about ten years. I mean, you must yes. there must be some things that you really like about the industry. What what keeps you getting up in the morning and coming back and doing all the hard work and the the tough slog? I I in, with with it's just recently that I stopped estimating myself. I've been doing it for a very long time, and I enjoy putting a tender together. Just from from the takeoff, reading through the specs, understanding what I'm providing, even just like the takeoff as a coloring, it was like a soothing process. So the takeoff is like a soothing process, and then the measurements and any calculation or design aspect becomes a challenge so there's there's a different stages of every tender um it is a repetitive process but every project is different and it has its own specifics uh, which which makes it always um exciting and especially with the industry mainly in electrical there's always advancements and technologies that's always being implemented so that keeps keeps you active on learning and applying what you learn into your work um even i guess internally and externally for you like you i know when when we speak and we're dealing with things you're always looking at new software looking at new way thing to do things what's the latest technology um yes so it's not just what's happening out there it's building from the inside back out for trading time exactly exactly um like even with even at the moment we don't have our own system that we just give to contractors we actually learn what our clients use and utilize and we actually adapt into their systems so we learn their systems their processes um the softwares that they use and we actually use that for them um making their process seem seamless where everything is happening in-house rather than they see us as an external um external contractor or provider you're more like a um a contractor that works on the inside i know that's the case for us it's you're part of our team and and we actually and we like to, it makes us feel like we're part of the team doing that makes us feel like we're part of the team and your success becomes our success as well yeah awesome it's definitely the way so you deal with um electrical contractors on a daily basis what do you what do you see out there that's a challenge? Because it's it's tough times at the moment. Construction's tough. We're seeing a lot of head contractors falling over. People getting owed a lot of money. Payment terms are slipping. How are you? The day to day chat you're having with Sparkies and and contractors. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? I feel like I feel like contractors worry more about the outside rather than the inside. I think if they focus on themselves, sorry, it's first time doing a podcast. I should put things on silence. <laughs> um, I feel like contractors, or even in general, everyone, they worry about what other people are doing, and they want to try to compare themselves to others, which is a good thing if it's about growth. But if you're just worried about how others are doing things, you're just going to be a copycat where you're not really learning or developing yourself. Um, I think believing in yourself is a big thing. Um, what was the main question? Sorry. What, what, what's, what the main... the, what's happening out there with electrical contractors? What are the challenges that, that they see day to day? What's making it tough for them to grow and to thrive? different con- different sized contractors face different issues um 
one one of the main issues that contractors do face is finding the right builders to work with and grow with um it it seems like to many that the builders are the ones that choose who they want to work with but i think if contractors choose who they want to work with it's it's a big game changer because you need it's not about just winning work it's about winning work and being profitable at the end and providing providing the service that that you can that can boost you not just the builder i'm not sure if that makes sense that, that makes it's, a it's a, sense Definitely. Yep, so yep. It's, it's making sure you're it's a two way it's a two way relationship not just from the top bottom it should also be from the bottom top yeah you want to want to find people that align with your values that have the same same end goal exactly. in mind it's a lot easier to uh, achieve things it, and make things happen and it's not easy to find straight away it does need some homework and exercise to find them so for example like meeting with them in person and discussing your plans from the beginning you would learn so much from the builder by just having that meeting whether they even have that meeting with you or not tells you a lot about the builder from from day one yes um and then pricing tenders i think it's it's all stage like initially just meeting with the builder if that ticks some of your boxes you can start with tenders and then what type of feedback do you get with your submissions that's then that can again um raise some flags if it is the right contractor or not and then when they win tenders how do they approach you or do they not approach you um but again it is also a two-way relationship how much are you supporting them in the tenders to begin with do you just price one job go to estimate one for example find out who's priced it and send your quote to everyone or are you choosing a, a builder and helping them win work so it is it is a two way two way relationship and you need to be open and open and have that discussion with them from the beginning that you are here to work with them at ach- achieve and win projects and you want to be part of that growth by delivering those jobs for them so how um, where does trading time fit into that piece of the puzzle because it's it sounds like it's well it is quite a complex um, process there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of stakeholders there's a lot of relationship managing um, and it's contractors dealing with head contractors slash builders where does trading time plug into the the whole system how do they plug in we the way we approach things is usually just by listening listening to our clients problems and issues and what they're facing because every company is different. You might think that our, all we do is electrical tenders and it's the same across the board. We just put the tender together and send it through, which is part part of what we do. We have to submit tenders, but we do it in a strategic way by, let's say, for example, with, with you guys, I'm sure you remember us having a meeting a while ago where similar to this podcast but it was more specific to you guys and what issues you guys are facing and just by listening to what problems you are facing i would find out where we can fit in and help for example i remember with with yourself we're talking about um we had a chat on what your success rate of projects are the different the different fields that you work in and what your different success rate of for different types of jobs or even different builders. And then from there, we would pretty much engineer it backwards and calculate what total project values of estimating, for example, we need to achieve the turnover that you require for your business to keep it running. And then that can even go further by yourself meeting with those builders letting them know that this is we've done this with you last year we'd like to achieve this much with you this year what is it that you need from us to get to this figure as well and then you guys listening to their problems and finding out what issues they face and where you can help to get to the figure that they need for you to get to where you need for us to get to what we need so it's 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 actually a very long process but 
doing so gives us goals to know what we're working towards and then that will give us pretty much like KPIs to achieve in order to reach the end goals. It was um so going through that process with you, it was it wasn't just about estimating. It was a, a bigger snapshot of the look of the business and it was really data driven. And some of the questions you were asking made me um really look a bit deeper into the business and what we were actually doing and what we actually needed to do. Um, it, yes. it made us look at um, how many employees we had out on the ground, what the makeup of the uh, management was, uh, the, the types of jobs we were doing and, and what, it, what it got to for us was targeting a market that, was, that we wanted to be in um, and yep. was more profitable. Um, it, it really stimulated a big, big flow on um, conversation to get us a much a much clearer business direction um, and that's that's come about from trading time really um, offering a estimating service which is really counting things on a piece of paper if you want to break it down yep. to what it's most yep. uh, basic is but but what we found was it wasn't that it was a, it was more of a um, a mentoring and more of a, a helping hand on the whole business and how we how we can be strategic about growing and building and going where we want to. So that was, yeah. And it wasn't really, it wasn't really me telling you what to do. It was just that conversation asking opens, like you, you start to think, Oh, I never really thought of that. And it was just that conversation by asking each other questions. Um, Cause that conversation opens up again, my mind on how trading time is running and how are we actually helping? Are we just a takeoff company or, are we part of the company, another like arm of the business to achieve its goals? Um, I'm sure you I had, went. Um, I'm sure you went through a similar, a similar process for trading time. You wanted to work out who trading time wanted to be, who your clients definitely. wanted to be, how you wanted to structure your your packages, how you wanted to um, manage your systems and all that. So, so knowing where you want to be, having that end goal we want to be this type of company that works with these clients and turns over this much money at this much profit helps you yes. reverse engineer yes. back to what you need to do today. Yes. And, and having that relationship also helps us with, with our cash flow now, with our resources, now understanding the size of your business and what you're trying to achieve. I need to provide set resources that can help you achieve these goals. So it's, it's knowing who you're dealing with is one of the main parts really of every business to know what resources and time to allocate to each part. Awesome. And as we said, you deal with quite a few different contractors. What's, uh, what are the qualities that the, the successful electrical contractors have? What are they doing that sets them apart from, you know, someone who's maybe not, doing so well what's the what's the what's the one or two things you can see that builds a really successful electrical contractor um the can do attitude is one of them um elaborate on that for me what do you see there just knowing that nothing is impossible what whatever goal you have doesn't matter how small you are you can you can reach that goal, and I've seen companies, a few companies that started with only a few people, man in a van with, with even just subcontractors, not even, um, employees, grow to become a two three million dollar business, by, growing growing together as well, um, one one of my contract one of my clients, used to, just like I guess most of these smaller guys they price per point. They've got a hundred dollars per GPO, for example, but with with time changing and prices of material and labor changing, it's not easy to just price per point anymore because things are changing very quickly. You need to understand that point that you're given a hundred dollars. What does it consist of? What material? What labor component? And then that labor component is you understanding your business costs, your overheads. Um, helps you understand where you sit in every submission um 
with with again with the smaller contractors as well one of the main things that they were struggling with to get into that next tier of contractor is managing time and resources they tend to focus so much on things that's not where they should be focusing on with with them with them growing they need to start to adapt and learn new skills to help to help them achieve those goals for example like focusing on client relationships rather than them doing the takeoff or um let's say with yourself we had recently that discussion where you spend so much time every week choosing what tenders you want to price and we ended up sitting together to understand your thought process of what tenders you choose and why and then we now implement that on your behalf and price those tenders saving you at least four or five hours a week where you're going through tenders tender invites that come to you and then now with those five hours you can put that in in other avenues that can bring more value to your company um yeah so it, it it's very different from client to client it's again like i said it was just listening to where they spend most of their time and where they would like to free their time to do what and then we can see where can we help to remove that burden so they can focus on what matters more for that stage of their business yeah yeah i can definitely um concur with that i mean as a business owner you find yourself thinking you have to do everything uh, or you want to do everything or no one else can do it. Um, but finding yeah, yes. finding those tasks that can be passed on and, and can be handled um, is definitely a godsend because it's, like you said, allows you to, instead of uh, counting PowerPoints on a plan for a takeoff, I can spend that time calling clients, seeing what the new opportunities are, spend time researching other um, opportunities. So it is finding a way. Even trust, trusting your team, trusting others yep. to grow together as a team. Like when, when you, you just mentioned that you think you have to do it because no one else can. I was exactly in that same boat for years where I thought, nah, I'm the only one that does the takeoff this way or puts a tender together that way. No one else can do it. Um, and maybe, maybe it's because I couldn't teach others properly or I wasn't open for the idea. But once I understood that anything, again, is possible by teaching, learning, guiding, and understanding how things are being done and why, and then trusting, trusting your colleagues is one, one of the most important parts of the business is trust them, rely on them, and then learn through mistakes. And otherwise, it's, it's very hard to grow. You're going to feel like you're at the bottleneck of the business and all the pressure is on you but trusting into one another and understand and letting your colleagues know what the goal is you you tend to feel that you're all work start working towards that goal and achieving achieving them together there's um there's always going to be mistakes we we've, we've seen that in every interaction yep. we've had it's what you do with the mistakes um, yes what you learn from them it's an opportunity yeah, mistakes are opportunities to grow and improve. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely the way the way to learn is make mistakes, try things, see what you're doing. Um, but like you're saying, working with your team, um, helping your team grow, and you're only as strong as your team that you've got. And I know you've got a you're building quite a solid, decent sized team now that gives you the ability to service a few clients. Um, definitely. we've spoken about uh, you you're conscious of maintaining the quality that you've been delivering and that's why we use it, is the quality um yeah how how are you going to or how can you how can you grow and still keep that that quality that with the team that you've got and as you add to the team what's the what's the plan on yourself growing and building the team it's i think it's leading by action or leading by example not by telling people what to do and how to do things. It's sh showing them how you provide quality in everything that you do. Yes, I could be not doing the tender takeoff with my colleagues anymore, but everything else that I do, I'm always providing that quality in pretty much everything I do. Um, and do you, you do that by 
putting yourself into other people's shoes. So if I was Scott Cliff or Matt Davies, for example, how? Sorry, I guess if I take it back one one step back, is the the way I see quality is done, especially with tenders, is um, making sure that when you go through the tender, you don't have any questions for me. So when if, I when as I the client when I'm reviewing yes. it, that that you guys and you do um, cover any risks, the inclusions, the exclusions, yes. anything yes. that's not not clear in the documentation, highlighting that to your clients so they can make. Uh, the best decision based on the data they've got before they submit the price. Exactly. And I always learn from the questions that come back to me. So the more questions I get asked, makes me understand and learn what I haven't covered during my tender process. And this is how we're talking about mistakes. Well, it could not be a mistake, but we're always learning to avoid those future mistakes. So we're always we're being proactive um, in our deliveries. and. You asking me questions means there's certain things I haven't covered and provided to you. So we make sure that we cover that. And then when me reviewing the tender of the estimators, the more questions I ask means the less they have covered. And we 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 try to aim to have less questions asked, which I think is where our quality quality comes in. Um by being very descriptive in everything we do. And being open as well, we, we're always open for um, criticism and feedback, and that's that's the only way we we can grow. Yeah, awesome. Um, well, so I guess what's what's next for Trading Time? Where's where does Trading Time want to go? Who do they want to be? What um, what value are they bringing to the electrical industry? Um, that's a very hard question because I've been thinking about it recently. Um, the more I've been speaking to different industries and again, just listening to them makes me think about where, where we're heading. I don't really have an, a specific answer yet, but, um, I can see that working collaboratively with different stakeholders as a team, um, is going to bring on so many opportunities that we're not really aware of as and it's it's happening day by day as i speak to different people um one of them could be collaborating with builders where we can help builders most builders struggle in receiving prices for example because of maybe the quantities of tenders they send out or not having relationships with electrical contractors um so we, we, we're always looking for gaps in the industry to see where we can help and close it like we've got electrical con i've got clients that ask me who are the good builders out there that we can work with or do you recommend anyone um so i'm like all right if i've got that question and then i also hear from contractors that are asking me to do a tender quickly because that builder hasn't re received any prices yet, um, shows me that, all right, so they've, I've got some clients looking, looking for builders and we've, we've got builders looking for electrical contractors. Um, so I think working collaboratively, I think this is one of my next steps is to see how we can link build, potential builders and contractors that share the same values together. Um, and it's, it's fine having multiple contractors working with the same builder because no builder is going to put all their eggs in one basket and in vice versa you're not going to have one electric contractor put all his baskets all his eggs in one basket too so it's going to there's going to be diversity with builders and contractors on who they work with and who they service awesome. this is this is one 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 of the things that just came to mind um, another one is that I'd like to share with you is working with um, suppliers, manufacturers, and subcontractors to, again, service electric contractors, similar to having the contractors servicing builders, going to that next step lower where, where you've got the suppliers and subcontractors servicing electrical contractors to achieve, to achieve those goals and not having 
um, missing components of tender submissions or having budgets in the tender submissions. We tend, we t I've realized recently that we've tend to put lots of budgets in tender submissions, which really makes the job increases the risk of project delivery and decreases also your belief in what you're delivering, whether you will deliver it um, in that with within within that budget or not. So close closing those gaps is again one one of the things that we'd like to tackle um as as a company. So that's um going out to suppliers and subcontractors and getting the same way you're getting your clients to support builders, you want the subcontractors and the suppliers to yes. be supporting um and then building relationships between them also finding what their goals are with what my clients' goals are and then connecting them too. So pretty much connecting the whole supply chain, I guess. Of, um, of the electrical industry. And look, this is just electrical. Um, you never know where, where, where we could end up in in the years mm -hmm. to come. Have, because again, business. talking about en the engineering background, it's a process that we're applying. And it's starting with electrical. That's our um, bread and butter. But I believe once that process is learned, it's very easy to apply everywhere. Yeah, regardless uh, of what you're installing, it can... Uh... Exactly, it's just facets of the industry. The, yeah, so I'm saying I, I'm not really sure exactly where, but it's the goal is big. Anything is achievable, but we're doing it step by step, just eating, eating a bite of the elephant at a time, one bite at a time. Well, it's, um, one bite at a time. I mean, it's really, um, really exciting. I've, um, I've been really excited to work alongside you for all these years because I've seen your growth and your your change you've um when i met you you're a fresh engineer um that started yeah. doing electrical estimating and and now you're a, a bona fide businessman that's um out there and I, I know it's something you've learned is the the sales side of the business um that's something that um i've seen you grow into over the last couple of years um knowing that that's, that's you've got to get out there you've got to let people know the great work that you do um because i know you're a humble man and um, it's not always doesn't always come naturally to you. So seeing your development and your growth has been um, exciting for me, and um, I've enjoyed it. And I really value your friendship and your, our business relationship. Likewise, um, likewise. It's been um, been real cool to have a chat. Um, we might have to do it again. See if uh, anyone cares about what we're talking about, because uh, I think we could. Well, we do talk for hours, but I think we could talk even more. Yeah. Um, coming yeah. up. So yeah, thank you very much. It's been been fun. Just let me know in advance. Just need to buy myself a microphone too. Yeah. You, you're going to go I'll, buy I'll a bigger there. microphone than mine as well, aren't you? Just a, one of those <laughs> yeah. uh, Joe Rogan ceiling mount ones. I, you'll see it coming from here. Yeah, I like it. Awesome, mate. Well, um, I'm sure we'll, we'll uh, chat really soon as we do. But again, thank you. Look, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Mate. All the best. Cheers, mate. Take see care. You. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.